Hello everybody, I'm Monisha and I represent Capital South Asia. This poster presentation focuses on meta map of systematic reviews and evidence in gap maps on the interviews to improve child well-being in low and middle income countries. At the outset, I would also like to mention that this map has been funded by UNICEF Office of Research in the Chenki and commissioned by Campbell Collaboration. This poster presentation, as you can see, is divided into six sections. Let us begin with a brief introduction. As per UNICEF definition of 2014, child well-being is a multidimensional and holistic concept. Research evidence show that one in three children, that is 200 million globally, fail to reach their full potential due to risk factors related to early childhood development. Mapping of existing evidence is a key step in determining what works and what does not work for child well-being. Before we proceed further with this presentation, it becomes crucial to answer a very fundamental question. What is an evidence gap map? Evidence gap map is a table or a matrix which provides a visual representation of the evidence in a particular sector or subsector. In this map, we present the intervention categories in rows and the outcome categories in columns. Figure 1 in the poster shows the mega map that has been developed. The intervention and outcomes are the primary dimensions of the map and are based on the conceptual framework which will be shown in figure 2. The online map also shows additional centers in secondary dimensions such as region and population. Bubbles correspond to the quality of evidence with red indicating low quality, yellow medium quality and green high quality systematic reviews. EGMs were represented by purple reviews and were not quality rated. Size of the bubbles indicate the volume of evidence in the cell. Figure 2 of this poster explains the conceptual framework of the mega map, which the authors have developed drawing from the UNICEF's strategic goals. Section 2 discusses the purpose of the review. The primary purpose was to map the existing evidence synthesis and EGMs on child well-being in low and middle income countries. Section 3 focuses on methods. The first domain in Section 3 discusses the electronic database search process, which has three stages. Stage 1 included a search on systematic reviews and EGMs from the IIIE database. In second stage, a full database search was performed. And finally, in Stage 3, additional websites were searched for GLAE literature, including those of bilateral and multilateral organizations. The studies identified through search were screened and coded by two reviewers and number of studies identified are recorded in the Prisma flowchart. For quality assessment of studies, systematic reviews were scored on the AMSTA 2 checklist. My cursor is now pointing towards figure 3, which depicts the flow of information through different phases of the map. It also shows the number of records identified, include and excluded at every phase. A total of 356 records were included in the final map. This is presented in section 4 which is focused on the results. Of these, 333 are systematic reviews and 23 are evidence gap map. The 333 systematic reviews identified good amount of evidence in traditional areas of health and education intervention. There were gaps in evidence on social welfare, social protections, and governance-related intervention. Main outcomes noted were related to health impacts and healthy development. Limited evidence was identified on learning and development, risk factor reduction, and economic impact of these interventions. Only one systematic review was identified with an equity focus. Table 1 shows the concentration and gaps in evidence in each cell. Clearly, health was heavily concentrated. Systematic reviews were found to be almost equally concentrated in all regions. Figure 4 describes the number of systematic re reviews by regions visually. The highest concentration of studies is in Sub-Saharan Africa, followed by South Asia. As stated before, the review identified 25 evidence gap maps. 
7. Evidence gap maps covering early childhood education and parenting. Number of evidence gap maps by intervention category and outcomes is presented in Table 2. In this map, the studies have also been analysed in line with the UNICEF strategic goals. Figure 5 of the poster shows the number of studies by the 5 UNICEF strategic goals. Section 5 points out the gaps in evidence. One major gap is for mental health interventions and mental health outcomes. A gap was also identified on the management of severe and acute malnutrition which is a huge issue in many low and middle income countries. There is less information on behavioral outcomes. There is also limited evidence on systematic renewal and on school vouchers or reduced fees. There is no systematic review of delivering education in humanitarian settings and of inclusive education for people with disability. There are also no reviews on safe places to play and traffic coming. Social work and social welfare in low and middle income countries is an under-researched area in child well-being. There was also limited evidence relating to child abuse and neglect as well as impact of birth registration. On the whole, there is paucity of evidence in programs for disadvantaged and discriminated. The concluding section of the poster discusses the next steps. There is a need to produce an equity-focused version of the mega map. 2020 update for this map has now been completed. The results are being analysed. For this update, we've also added the COVID-19 tag as a filter to capture reviews and EGMs specifically relevant to pandemic situations and their response measures. As discussed, High-quality systematic reviews in health and education have been identified. This implies that there is substantial evidence base for governments and international agencies to draw upon for program and policy design. More evidence synthesis measuring interventions to meet the needs of vulnerable populations is needed to bridge the gap. Thank you.